Hello, this is Toby Bears with DMAnswers.com. This evening I'd like to talk about boosted trees and how they can be used for predictive quality control to follow up the um, last blog post. This will be my last blog post on predictive quality control um, for the foreseeable future. But boosted trees is another method where you can um, go ahead, we'll use the machine data for the example, and we can do that where we can do a regression analysis because we have an output that is a numerical output. And we can use um, one of the tools in the, uh, the, the boost of trees to give us a predictor importance. So we'll go ahead and select all the uh, inputs and go and say OK. And we keep all the defaults for the boost of trees and it'll build, build the 200 trees and then I can get a predictor importance. So this predictor importance ranks them by um, a rank and then also a importance from 0 to 1. Uh, machine 8, if you go with all the variables, is considered the most important variable. One thing that's interesting, though, is that to note that um, we found that the input variables, there are several of them that are highly correlated. And when we, when we used the predictor screening in the prior, plot, prior blog post, we got some weird results. And so we needed to remove some of those redundancies before we could actually perform the predictor screening so we could get reliable results. It looks, it appears that with the um, boosted trees that we need to do the same type of technique. And so, um, I'll go ahead and, and show the results um, with the reduced variable set. They're right here. Um, these are, if you use a reduced variable set, um, this has the redundant variables removed and do the boosted tree predictor importance. Um, Sublot one is a being the most important variable. And user machine two, it comes in a distant second. So we can compare that with the results from the prior blog posts using the same data set. This right here with the graph, um, or the bar graph, showing the importance of the F value from the feature selection, this right here, shows that user machine one was the most important variable. This is okay in terms of um, using feature selection, but when we went to predictor screening, uh, we got weird results if we didn't reduce the, da the data set before performing the predictor screening. With the feature selection, that reduction was not necessary, but we got um, similar results. User machine one, in both cases, re with reduced set for predictor screening and with a whole data set for feature selection, you got the same um, variable, top variable, for predictor importance. If you look down here for the, um, the boosted tree, Sublot one ended up being the most important variable. So which one do we believe? And this is where I think we have to remember something in the fact that with these this data set and that there is the, the problem with the, the inputs being highly correlated, we have removed data. And so when we get an important variable, is it really the most important one? Or was it just that we've removed one from the model that was highly correlated and actually the one that we removed is the one that's important. And it's just because they're confounded that we can't separate and find which one it truly is. And we actually need to do an additional experiment to find out which of the two correlated inputs is the actual um, variable causing the, um, the change in the quality score in this case. So I think that um, it would probably be interesting since sublot one does end up being the second very most important variable up here, and it's most important here, that it might warrant going and figuring out if sublot one really is important. So it seems that maybe it'd be useful to look at all of the, the outputs of all three methods and look at them and see what is kind of in common between them. And it looks like the user machine one might have some merit 
and sublot one might have some merit to look at. So I think that's my my recommendation is to first of all with boosted trees you need to remove correlated inputs before beginning if those exist um, at least if they are categorically um, correlated it seems that that helps in this case and then um, once we get the results from all three methods to compare them and find the the ones that in common that are the most important so kind of use like a a, a voted um, method where you use the top ones from each of the methods to vote for what is the are the most important variables so that could be another methodology or another um, a strategy that you use to find the most important variables but nonetheless you can um, automate these techniques by um, building um, a macro and then running that macro in an automated fashion by scheduling a Windows task to run it and then you could send um, emails to people um, warning them if there is a, a particular variable that's showing um, up as being important uh, if there is nothing if it's a very flat distribution um, you could potentially um, not have it alarm in other words in this case the f values were pretty small and so that is maybe one advantage of the the methods of using feature selection or predictor screening over the boosted trees is that you could use the magnitude of the f value as potentially a cutoff and so if you knew a had a lot of knowledge about a particular process, you could say, I know that if the magnitude of the F value is not greater than 50, then it's not of importance, of practical importance to me. And so in this case, you could do a check and see that none of them are greater than 50. Therefore, you would just say that um, there's nothing really going on in this data set. And therefore, you wouldn't send an alarm to look at this. But on the other hand, um, if we knew that if the f value was above 25 that there really was something going on and we were concerned we would be concerned with magnitudes of or f values that were above 25 then this would be a good um, cutoff to say send an email and warn people that they needed to do some investigation into why maybe user one machine one or potentially sublot one were um, the what was going on with those particular variables so there are some more um, advice for predictive quality control. Hope you find these things useful. I think if you are in a manufacturing setting or any type of uh, production um, where you're manufacturing goods or you're doing a service and you have a good method of establishing a quality score or other some other continuous metric with inputs that you're wanting to know if they have an effect, this could be a viable technique to help you to um, give you some clues to be able to know where to go look um, for the root cause of why your um, continuous output is changing. Or it could also give you the assurance that nothing ha is changing and that everything's good and you don't need to necessarily um, look at that um, that particular day. So I thank you again for listening and um, talk to you again in a couple of weeks.